This coming Tuesday marks the 20th anniversary of Minnesota's historic tobacco settlement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is truly a historic day. The tobacco industry has surrendered, and they have surrendered on our terms. That, of course, is former Minnesota Attorney General Skip Humphrey announcing that the tobacco industry would pay the state more than $6 billion. The state and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota had sued tobacco companies, accusing them of misleading the public about the dangers of smoking for years. After a four-month trial in St. Paul and just hours before the ju jury was to deliberate, came news of a breakthrough settlement. Mike Cerisi and Roberta Auburn were lawyers for the state and started a foundation with some of that settlement money. So far, the Cerisi Walburn Foundation for Children has given out more than $23 million in grants. And that's in addition to that $6 billion, and not $600 billion, $6 billion that the state continues to receive. And right now, joining us is Mike Cerisi and Roberta Walburn. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having us. And you look just the same as you did 20 years well, ago. Oh, that's very kind, <laughs> Miss. You do, but I don't. Roberta right. does also. All right. I do want to ask you, because in researching this, I found a fascinating fact. Uh, m most states settled. Minnesota didn't settle. And you ended up, Minnesota ended up with $3 billion more than they probably would have. Weren't you under pressure to settle? We were. Uh, former Governor Carlson was uh, very adamant in the fact that he thought we should settle. And, and I could understand his position. The industry had never lost a case, and there was $4 billion on the table. Uh, close to four billion, and we said no. But Skip Humphrey was very, very influential in that. And w one of the reasons, in addition to the money that we didn't want to settle before trial, was um, we wanted the documents, the 35 million pages of uh, secret tobacco company documents that we had discovered during the litigation, to become public. And they did. And they did, but not until the end of the trial. All right. Uh, let's talk about the fact that this money continues to come into Minnesota even now. It's about you're saying 170 million dollars a year. Tell us about where that money is going. Uh, well, the money, uh, there's several pots of money. The biggest pot is the 170 some million that goes into the general treasury of the state every year. And this is every year, and this will be indefinite, you were telling me. What kinds of things does it go for, Mike? Well, it goes for the, it goes into the general revenue fund, so the state uses it as it sees fit. It was intended to be used for the children. Uh, we had a foundation or an endowment set up originally, uh, but as you know, uh, two governors, Governor uh, Plenty and Governor Dayton used a lot of the tobacco money to reduce the deficits that we had at two different points in time. Uh, it used to go every year, money went into every county in the state to be used for kids at risk. It wasn't just risk of smoking, it could be abuse, it could be all kinds of things. Counties could use it as they see fit. But today, that money is going into the general fund, and, and of course, the legislature uses it as it sees fit. In addition, Blue Cross Blue Shield established a foundation with their uh, money, and then we uh, established in the old firm foundation, uh, which is now the Tracy Walburn Foundation. And for a lot of people watching us uh, 20 years ago, they may not have even been born 20 years ago, but right outside our door, uh, the nice ride bikes, that is a direct result of this settlement. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, that's part of the uh, funding from the Blue Cross um, Foundation that was set up with tobacco money. Blue Cross was a co plaintiff with the state of Minnesota. Um, got some 470 million in the settlement uh, just just for, for itself, and is using some of that money, as you say, for the nice ride bikes. All right. And tell us about some of the education work that your own foundation does and, and continues to do. Uh, we we for the past 20 years we've focused on uh, pre-K through 12 education, and we've supported a number of schools and things like Northside Achievement Zone, uh, Hiawatha, uh, Harvest Prep. Uh, you know, just a number of different uh, way to grow, uh, and it's we, we primarily looked at young children. Uh, you know the education gap that we have here in uh, in Minnesota, so we've tried to approach it uh, from the standpoint of starting at a very young age and taking it all the way through K through 12, and we're now starting with scholarships for uh, kids going to college. And you've done also, uh, you've helped fund uh, Cristo Ray, which has been an enormous success, Correct. and right. other school projects. Um, when you think about it. I and mean, this was considered a huge uphill battle, and there were a lot of people who thought this was nuts back then. I, I was reporting back then. Uh, what made you think that, that you could do it along with these yes, other well, states? Some of our partners thought it was nuts, too. Um, <laughs> uh, we thought it was the right thing to do. Um, we understood the huge challenge. We spent um, some four years uh, researching the case before we brought it because we knew the 40-year history of the tobacco industry never losing a single case. But we did it because um, we thought it, it was the right thing to do. It was the largest preventable cause of, of death in this country. 
um, and uh, we, we wanted to take that challenge on. All right, well, Mike Sarisi and Roberta Walburn, thank you so much for coming in, and really an amazing victory. You're saying there really hasn't been a suit like this or a case like this before or after, so. There hasn't, yeah. Pretty amazing, thank you so much. Thank you, Esme. All right.